For some reason that, you know, there's the, the image in my head of a German short hair pointer. Set my heart on that and I lucked out and got, got copper. I kind of want to prove to people, especially newer people that get into it, that you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to train your dog. You just have to spend probably thousands of hours to train them. <laughs> There was a lot of things, a lot of questions, and in my mind, like I, you know, to start the training, I have to start like teach her, you know, to look for birds and what. But some of the things that I'm seeing is like I'm the one being trained. To be hunting with him finally is is amazing. He's full of energy when he comes out of the truck and we gotta burn some of that off before he really gets ready to hunt and that's been the big challenge. You know, he's 10 and a half, pushing 11 months old now, so kind of expected. Trying to get him to burn his energy off and then once he does, he's, he's, he locks on, he's pointing birds and we now have introduced whoa, so trying to work on that even during the hunts too, so. 100 yards. Yeah, so. We went on a hunt, his first hunt for wild birds, flushed a couple of birds that he ran by that I ended up flushing by walking by. We were going through this, this area and I thought, man, this looks like a spot where some woodcock would be. No sooner did I think that, did he lock up on a point. I was walking up and doing the woe when he was staying and I, when I shot it and I actually ended up wing shooting the bird. He thought it kept going, so he kept running. Um, but, and then another thing we're working on is, is the dead bird, uh, hunt, hunting dead. So I called him back and told him dead bird and he sniffed it out, found it and uh, brought it back to me. My parents bought this camp in 2004. It's camp, you know, this is where we come. This is where we come to get away. This is where we come to hunt. There's no cell service here. No one's gonna bug you here. When you wanna get away, this is where you come. You come up to the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont and you get away for a while. One of the really cool things that my dad and mom started when they were here right off was the camp journal. And there's things, there's pictures and entries in there from back in 2004 when they bought this place leading up to today, when, when, uh, when I wrote in it today, to, um, to talk about actually being here with Copper and a little bit about the hunt we did yesterday around here. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's really cool to, to see all that over these last 18 years. So now this is kind of, I feel like this has come full circle because one of the first things I think I remember talking about was being here when we do our quote unquote small game weekends here, you know, which is we're bird hunting and everyone's saying for years, somebody's got to get a dog, somebody's got to get a dog. And here we are with copper and you know, it's kind of just like a, you know, it seems so a little unreal to me that it's actually happening and that I kind of helped put him into a position to help get us to make sure we're successful here. Being here with my brother and my nephew is, is, is really cool. And, you know, I wish that my other brother could be here, but he can't, he's a little under the weather. But, um, you know, and also my dad, they just moved, so they're too busy with the new house. But, you know, being able to be here with family, period, is with Copper and going out hunting is, is one of the biggest probably dreams come true with this thing that I've that I've had you know he's by no means going to be an A plus dog but you know being able to be here with everybody is is pretty good there are days where I feel like I have failed and there are days where the day he pointed that woodcock I felt such a big I felt so accomplished in that because I I you know he's he's a pointing dog it's bred into him that's what he does but I did things to help him get there, you know. You know, we worked for a long time on just his basic obedience. We worked for a long time on, okay. you know, everything else. And now to have that happen is a really good feeling, you know. And to continue to see him grow is a really good feeling. To sit there and know that I've, you know, being never being a dog trainer before and doing this off of, you know, reading online training programs and YouTube videos and books and everything like that, that this is, this is where we've come, you know. And it's, it's a really good feeling to, to know that you've, you know, somewhat created a bird dog. <laughs> Well,
Woke up this morning, 12 degrees. Got out here in the water. The waders are all freezing up on us. And then probably 15 minutes into legal shooting, we had a good flock of blacks come in. And we took two out of that flock, so that was really good. She was a little, she couldn't see it happening. So we had to guide her out, but she got one of the two, which was good. Overall, she's doing, progressing every time we go out. Things are getting easier and she's starting to learn hand commands a little better so she can kind of get her attention. She'll spin around, look at you, and you can kind of point now with your arm and she'll look back the other way where you're going. So that's been good for guiding her if she can't smell it or see it. Yeah, so, um, I mean, River did honestly better than I thought she was gonna do this year. Um, we've had a lot of setbacks and most of it's just with us. Uh, the first step that she got, she was really scared of, which was kind of funny. We've had, like I said, a lot of setbacks this year. Um, we bought a boat to go out with. Motor's not doing too well. Uh, the ducks didn't like the blind, so most of the time they flared away from us. Uh, thankfully, we have a friend that let us use his blind a few times. When we first went out, she was re her manners in the blind were really bad. And it took a few times, you know, we kind of had to tell our friends too that you need to just ignore her because she thinks she's here to play with you and she's not. Um, you know, after a few times, especially when Josh and I went ourselves, you know, now she's just sitting right in between us, staying calm. She walks around a little bit, but um, her manners are a lot better and you know there's a fine line where you have to be strict with her and have her know that this is not playtime but then as soon as we get out of the blind i let her go wild because she needs to be able to have some fun too and enjoy this especially when we have a year that we're not getting anything and the hunting has not been good for us so <laughs> the training went pretty well for my first time figuring out how to train with her, not really knowing a lot about waterfowl myself. There's a lot of things that I've learned this year that I'm gonna have to do throughout the next year with her, such as like the, the hand commands and kind of figuring out, you know, next year we're gonna still use the boat, we're gonna build a blind for the boat and then have a couple other blinds set up for her as well, but we need to figure out a way that she can be able to see the ducks because she's not connecting with them and then go from there. Today, um, we're at basically we're at Peaceable Hill. Um, we had the opportunity to have some planted birds. It's a hunting training exercise that we basically had today. Um, we had Glenn and Mark. Um, Mark was basically our shooter. Um, Glenn was um, a really helpful in a lot of the training today and helping guide myself um, towards Kriya and how she was responding to these birds. It was really nice to have him in the background, um, just kind of him giving me commands and me like relaying that what he was telling me to do with Kriya. And it really helped basically paint a picture of like, okay, what she's supposed to be doing, what she shouldn't be doing. One of the nice things about hunting this preserve um, is the visual that you have. You can see everything. Like you have, you know, you have the cover, you have open lanes, you can walk, you can, you're watching your dog the entire time and you can see how they respond. And that makes it really, really nice just because, you know, in the woods, a lot of the stuff that we've been doing has been in the grouse woods. You can't see anything. It's very, you're, you're blind hunting, uh, more or less. This is a really great opportunity to be, really see how your dog responds and pick up on the, the things they do well, things they aren't doing well, and then you can see the things you need to work on. Uh, and today was a really good opportunity to do that. So we did have some success. We ended up with two out of four birds that were taken. A little bit of training, like hands-on training with myself, and working with her once she went on point. Um, so in today's um, training, we we had Kriya out. This is probably 25, 27 degrees out. We have a couple inches of snow um, still on the ground. 
Um, there's zero wind today. Um, so that was kind of a factor, just because when Kriya would go on point, um, she was basically on top of the birds, um, which was fine. It was kind of expected, I think, from everybody. There was just, there was no scent that was being moved around. Um, she did really well on her points. And, you know, I was incorporating the woe command with her, getting her to hold point, hold, and she did that pretty well. She did break when the bird flushed. Again, that's something that was kind of expected and something we need to work on, and we know that. Um, so going forward, I think that's gonna be our next steps. This was a good opportunity to basically have her in a different environment. Birds were present. Responding was, you know, how she responded was different. A lot of things were, were, were a lot different than what we've been seeing. And it's, for the most part, it's been good. It's been good training for myself, basically. And I think that's gonna help me in the future work with her now going forward. Things we need to work on, we still need to get her to, you know, hold when the bird flushes so she's not chasing after him. Um, we're still seeing a bunch of puppyisms, you know, with her. She still gets a little rowdy, ornery. Um, you know, likes to chew the sticks and the stalks and things like that. Besides that, um, we also need to think about her retrieving. You know, what we're seeing is that um, the dummy dummies and real, real, real birds are two separate animals. And so we need to really take a step back and like, I guess we need to like consider what we're going to do and what steps is going to be what steps we're going to be looking at in the future going forward for that.